Thank you. You may be seated. Well, I think we had a pretty good missions minute just about 15 minutes ago. <laughs> but I do want to do something to help you remember to pray for our missionaries. Since this is supposed to be a minute, Pastor, and I usually take 10 or so, I'd like you, like we did this once before, to name all of the missionaries that we support in a minute. Just shout them out. I'll repeat them if I hear them. Go. Brown. Malucci. Esposito. Esposito. Miracles. That's, a, that's an easy one. You guys should have said that first. Come on. Benefield. Young. Pierce. Who's the people in Canada? <laughs> Who's the one in Canada? <laughs> Owen B. Good. Come on. Say it louder. I'm deaf. Say again. Nope. Close. Somebody said Pierce. I didn't even start. I didn't even start my watch on a minute. You guys, we got Esposito. Shemish. Yes, Shemish. Good. Nope. Young. We got Young. Who are those people in Canada? Yeah, that's half of it. Watson, yes, good. You guys have about 10 seconds. Russell, yes, good. And the other one, yeah, Burton. Russell and the other ones. I hope you're not watching, Brother Burton. You guys' time is up. Brother Anger. Petrary, oh. Gallo, oh. Walker, oh, no. oh. Christian Law Association, oh. Snodderly. Oh. Oh. He's only a couple hours away. <laughs> I have one of these because it really helps me out. It's, <laughs> it's good to have a cheat sheet. Please pray for your missionaries. Let's pray for the offering. Dear Lord, we thank you for this time that we have together. Lord, we thank you for a church with open doors on a Wednesday night. Lord, we thank you for the preaching of your word. Uh, we thank you for the opportunity that you give us to uh, support our missionaries, uh, support our pastor, Lord, keep our church doors open. Uh, Lord, we thank you for the opportunities you give us to share the gospel. I pray that we would uh, be able to continue to be faithful to you and sharing the gospel with others. Lord, help us to remember to be faithful with our tithes and generous with our offerings. In Jesus' name, amen. Wash my sins away today, man. Thank God it's not blood again. While walking down the memory lane a past not long ago, Paul said, Katie, right by my side, making me feel old. He brought a thoughts of hurt and pain when I had gone astray. He wanted to discourage me as I walked. 
that, all those sins are under the blood. You know, you know you're down south when uh, they add an extra syllable to everything. And it's, they talked about see and see in. See and they, the Lord took care of the see in. <laughs> Just add an extra syllable and, and you'll, you'll, be see, you'll be speaking southern real fast. Would you please take your Bible and turn to Matthew chapter 16 and verse 21. Matthew 16, 21. Well, I ask you five critical questions. First, what value is there in living your life in service to your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Why should you forego so many of this world's pleasures when they're so readily accessible to you? What does Jesus have to offer that makes it worthwhile to serve him rather than enjoy yourself? Are you wasting your life if you choose to actively serve the Lord? And then fifth and last... Would you be miserable and regretful at the end of your days if you gave yourself wholeheartedly to Christ's service? Jesus had to go, I'm sorry, Jesus had to prepare the minds of his apostles for those times in which they would inevitably ask themselves those same questions, particularly when persecution rose against them. Now notice, please, Matthew 16 and verse 21. Matthew 16, 21. And Trisha will give you a heads up. The next slide, uh, I tried to use the hidden feature to cover when, when for the, anyway, so just if it throws you, just you'll be aware. Matthew 16, verse 21. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be from what other source of men. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels... And then he shall reward every man according to his works. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. In masterful fashion, Jesus answered all five questions by asking two of his own. There in verse number 26, verse 26, For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? You know, that's an excellent question, not just for the lost, but also for the saved. To illustrate what Jesus was teaching his disciples, let me tell you about the most amazing home I have ever visited. Several years ago, at the invitation of our daughters, Trisha and Bethany, we joined them uh, there in, uh, near Monterey, uh, the town of Trish. Carmel by the Sea, yes, Carmel, Carmel by the Sea, those, those two twin towns. And we spent a couple days there, and included in the trip was we, we took a ride down the coast. We had no idea how far down the coast, it just goes on and on and on, to get to the estate in San Simeon along the central coast, which is, pop, which is popularly called Hearst Castle. William Randolph Hearst lived from 1863 to 1951. Hearst was the heir of a wealthy father. He became, a highly, he became highly successful in his own right as a newspaper publisher, art collector, and movie producer. Yet he also became an idolater in the sense that covetousness is idolatry and an adulterer. Found himself a uh, Marion Davis, a, a, a lovely movie star, starlet. 
and uh, and that she became his companion of many years. You know, along he had a wife and children, but he also had his his mistress as well. The riches of William Randolph Hearst became his ruin. The Bible teaches us, in having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierce themselves through with many sorrows. Hurst built for himself a private paradise he called La Cuesta Encantada, or the Enchanted Hill. He began planning it in 1919 at the age of 56. He continued building it for 27 years until he was 83 years old. One book calls La Cuesta Encantada an architectural masterpiece. The main house on the estate has 115 rooms on four floors, including 38 bedrooms, 42 bathrooms, 14 sitting rooms, two libraries, a billiards room, a movie theater that's probably more ornate than any you've ever sat in, a full, a full commercial kitchen, pantry, and a dining room fit for royalty. There are also three large and magnificent guest houses, the uh, smallest of which is over 3,500 square feet and the largest over 5,000 square feet or over four times the size of my house, is their guest house. There's also a gigantic outdoor swimming pool, a huge indoor swimming pool, twin tennis courts, gardens, fountains, and for several years, the world's largest zoo held by a private citizen. Now, as you... Turn to the slide 35, Miss Tricia, the next slide. I, I, I just want to pause here and just say, if man can do this, you think about the world that God made in six days. And for 2,000 years, he's been preparing a place for you. Just, you know, if, if man can accomplish this, just what does the Lord have in store for you and me? It's mind-boggling. I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither hath it entered into the heart of man what God hath prepared for them. So take your wildest imagination, such as what you're seeing here. Let it go wild. I mean, put Disneyland and Six Flags on your estate. All right, whatever you want to incorporate in, God has something that exceeds whatever you can ask or think. So think grandly, think extravagantly. And the Lord has something in store for you that goes even beyond that. La Cuesta Encantada was a source of great pride and enjoyment for Mr. Hurst for over a quarter century. But he finally died at the age of 88, away from his beloved estate in San Simeon. Because Hurst was an Episcopalian, many would assume that he was a Christian. But I find no indication that Hurst had any understanding of, nor appreciation for, the Lord Jesus Christ of the Bible. He may have had some limited devotion to an Episcopal-style Roman Catholic Jesus, who is actually a false Christ of satanic origin. But there's no evidence that Hurst had a saving faith in the true Christ of the Bible. I can say, therefore, on the authority of the Scriptures, that though Hearst gained a great deal of this world by his acquisition of several newspapers, multiple mansions, vast real estate holdings, ranches, mines, radio stations, warehouses filled with art and antiquities, entertainment properties, and the beautiful young body of his movie star mistress, he lost his own soul. 
If that evaluation is correct, then William Randolph Hearst has been burning in hell since 1951. And he will continue to burn in hell through time and then be moved to the lake of fire for eternity. For the sun is no sooner risen with the burning heat, but it withereth the grass, and the flower thereof falleth, and the grace of the fashion of it perisheth, so also shall the rich man fade away in his ways. An even more dramatic and much more recent illustration of the validity of Matthew 26, 16 is the case of 46-year-old Chinese billionaire, with a B, billionaire, Lam Kok, seen here with winemaker James Gregory and their wives, standing in front of the French Chateau, which is part of the vineyard that Koch had just purchased from Gregory in December 2013. Now again, I know that is a fabulous dwelling we're seeing, but just compare that to what's waiting for us in heaven. When you go to ask yourself those five questions, you can't just look at here and now. You've got to factor in what the Lord has prepared for you in heaven. Now, as I mentioned, they just bought this place and the uh, over 100-acre vineyard in, in prime country there in the wine uh, region of, of France. And in celebration, Gregory took Koch, Koch's 12-year-old son, and an interpreter on a flight around the 120-acre uh, vineyard in Gregory's private helicopter. Less than an hour after this photo was taken, the helicopter crashed, killing all four passengers. These two men are dead. They're rejoicing here. They're thrilled with what they've acquired of this world's riches at that moment, but in less than an hour, their souls were required of them. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? But what of you as a Christian? Are you working so hard to avoid your cross that you are effectively denying your Lord? In striving to save your life here and now, are you losing much of the glory and joy of your coming eternal life? It's easy to covet this world's wealth, and, and you look at, the, at, at its sinners who have so much of the riches and influence of this world, such as did William Randolph Hearst. You can look with longing upon the houses, cars, clothing, and vacations that are enjoyed by your boss, your co-workers, your friends, your relatives, and by the successful and wealthy people who live around us all, especially here in Sonoma County, knowing that knowing all along that their paycheck, possessions, pleasures, power, and prestige could potentially be yours if you would give yourself wholeheartedly to its pursuit in this wonderful free enterprise economy of ours. But I warn you that longing can soon congeal into envy and then harden into lusting. In other words, you're on the pathway to sin and alienation from fellowship with God. You know perfectly well that you'll never gain the whole world, nor probably achieve great riches and status in this life. But you know just as well that, living as you do in our capitalistic system, you could get your hands on a fair amount of this world's wealth if you really wanted to, if you really worked at it and applied yourself. It is possible. But in gaining that portion of this world's goods, it is just as likely that you will compromise your earthly blessings and eternal glory that come only from God. The Lord has promised, a faithful man shall abound with blessings. But he that maketh haste to be rich shall not be innocent. It is possible to be wealthy, yet spiritual. Though it is a tremendous challenge to be both wealthy and spiritual simultaneously. There are several wealthy independent Baptists in this world today who are using their resources to the glory of God. That is, of course, how the, our Lord would have it. Charge them that are rich in this world 
that they be not high-minded nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy, that they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate. And that communicate is to show your appreciation for someone financially, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come, that they may lay hold on eternal life. If you have the opportunity of making money legitimately, or if you inherit a substantial sum, and yet you can remain a humble, conscientious Christian who is still heavily committed to and involved in your local church, then, yes, use your wealth to the glory of God. But don't make riches your life's ambition, however pure your initial motives may be. I know you're thinking, if I got a bunch of money, man, I would just help missionaries over the world. And yet, why is it then that people that have the money hold on to it so tightly and just won't let a penny of it go? Man, they're skin flints. It's interesting that when you don't have it, you can imagine all the things you do with it, and when you do have it, you won't let go of it. So I, I'm not so sure that, that you would really follow through on all these. And if you would, I mean, praise God. But, but it, 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 you'd, be, you'd be the exception, not the rule. God knows that the pursuit of money could destroy you whether or not you ever actually come into possession of it because that's not a given. The actual acquisition of money could indeed ruin you. And more than that, it could ruin your testimony, your marriage, your kids, and compromise your eternal rewards. Tonight, I call you to set your priorities wisely. Labor not to be rich. Cease from thine own wisdom. Be in the world, but not of the world. Use this world without abusing it. Set your affection where? On things above, not on things on the earth. Take advantage of the opportunities provided you in this church to lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Or as it says in the book of Proverbs, there is that maketh, him, there is that maketh himself rich, yet hath nothing. There is that maketh himself poor, yet hath great riches. I have five questions for you to ponder as I close this sermon. What value is there in living your life in service to your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Why should you forego so many of this world's pleasures when they are so readily accessible to you? What does Jesus have to offer that makes it more worthwhile to serve him rather than to enjoy yourself? Are you wasting your life if you choose to actively serve the Lord? Would you be miserable and regretful at the end of your days if you gave yourself wholeheartedly to Christ's service? Your ability to answer those questions accurately and scripturally will determine the course of your life. Because if you get it, if you nail this thing now, if you get it nailed down, a lot of the temptations that Satan would use to pull you off course will be neutralized. But if you answer these questions poorly, if you, give, you come up with the wrong answer, it will be a piece of cake for Satan to destroy you. His snares will be laid out before you, and you're going to hit one after another, after another, after another. And that will determine the course of your life and the quality of your eternity. Just before I completely shut down, of course, we have as our guests uh, several here from China and, uh, and, and of course, uh, Cousin Becky from, from Chicago. But, uh, but I'd like to ask my son, William, and uh, William, if you'll come back again, and I'm going to have you testify about, you know, uh, man, you, you cast your bread upon the waters, uh, and you, you, you went to a foreign country serving the Lord there, and... Uh, as you in your own mind formulate the answer to, is it worth it, uh, you, can, you can let Trisha know if you'd rather have this not uh, broadcast and archived. You know, we, we, can, we can edit this. We can shut down the camera now if you want. If it's okay for it to be broadcast, uh, just go ahead and testify. But let me, uh, let me have you just, you know, a couple years ago, you did a wonderful, maybe longer than that even now, you did a great all your... Uh, Updates that you send us are great. You do a tremendous job writing them. And, uh, but one in particular I really remember 
is you quoted Tim Rule as saying, in effect, that, you know, this, this is the life. And, and you, you went off from there and just talked about how good God's been. And, of course, they don't trumpet the challenges they have in, in life and ministry, you know. And, and uh, that's not our place to lay our burdens upon your shoulders. But they have many of the same challenges in marriage and family and, and extended family that... Uh, I mean, after all, I'm Becky's father-in-law. There's all kinds of challenges she's got to face. Uh, and so, uh, th- th- just like we, we all have, health issues, financial uh, problems from time to time, sometimes just being scared to death what's going to happen next, and they have to deal with the Chinese government, and all, all that is just going on and on continuously at a very high pace. These guys are pushing perpetually. And, uh, but with all that, I, I, I think there's also some compensations God gives as well. With that, as an intro, Bill, take it from there. Uh, we want to go home tonight. All I can tell you is that... Give me some time, I'll take it. All I can tell you is that your burrito is no longer available after 10 o'clock. So let's let's pray. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. I, I really, I don't know, even know. I don't even know where to begin. Uh, but I'll, I'll just, I guess, we, I, you got to start somewhere, so... Uh, I was born. No, uh, that's a little too far back. Uh, but but uh, my my dad knows a little bit about uh, just a little bit about my the, the struggles that I had in my heart. When I uh, obviously like anybody, I got I had dreams, and then uh, I gave my heart to God. And just to when I was getting you know I, I you know anybody had ups and downs, but you still have those dreams. And I remember this one time I was going through a time where I really wasn't as close to God as I as I should have been, and as a teenager. And I had this one time where, um, you know, I was with my grandpa. Now, my grandpa now is, is probably the, the world's most spiritual man, I guess. I don't know. He's always giving me advice about the Bible now, but uh, whenever I see him. But at that time, he was not really uh, pushing me toward uh, serving the Lord. He was actually pushing me uh, to do, you could do anything you want, kind of a, a thing. And, and one day, um, he was kind of giving me that same spiel. He had, he's the one who had given my first computer and really just had really, I love, he just loves me and, and I love him. But we were in his truck one day and, 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 uh, and I was just kind of in that time where, you know, yeah, those dreams that are there just look so good, but I'm getting ready to go to Bible college. And he, he said, uh, you know, you can do whatever you want. I said, yeah, Grandpa, but I, I, I got to go to Bible college. I told him that, I got to go to Bible college. And uh, a couple days, like three days later, my dad and I are in a car. And by then, I'm back to read my Bible. You know, it's a couple days, stress. I'm, I'm right with God. I'm excited about serving the Lord. I'm with my dad in the car. And he, he said, he, he said, uh, he said that, son, is, is everything okay? I said, yeah. He said, uh, he said you, you, you don't feel like your mom and I are like forcing you to be in the ministry, do you? No, that's the worst, that's the furthest thing that's ever happened, you know. No, I mean, if anything, you know, I'm, I'm pushing on ahead and everybody. He said, you, you don't feel like we're like forcing you to Bible college, do you? No, no. He said, that is so strange. Your grandma called your mom and she was livid. She was, think, she was telling us that we were sh- forcing you to be in the ministry and go to Bible college. And I'm like, weird. And all of a sudden, my heart just smote me. And that one comment there. You know, I, I was, I'm not telling you I'd never had any other dreams or anything like that. But in the end, when I, when I went to Bible college, when I decided to go to China, excuse me, um, I, I knew I was going to go to, to, to China without having gone on deputation. I knew that. And I was fully planning on dropping off the face of the earth, uh, and, and well, into China. And you don't understand this too much, but I was just, I wanted to be forgotten almost. Um, just, just go do my own thing for God and don't let anybody attack me. <laughs> and um, when, when I first had my first date with my wife, uh, very first date, I was afraid of falling in love with her. Uh, I'd just known her for a few months, and I knew I could easily, easily, completely fall in love with her. And I was afraid if I fell in love with her and then she decided not to go with me to China, that I wouldn't go to China. So the very first date, I told her everything. I'm going to China. I'm going to go to China. And I told her, we, we may not ever um, own a home. We may not ever um, have uh, electricity. We may not have running water. And I, I had no idea what China was like. Um, and you realize, realize, you know, this is, this is a while back now. And uh, I told her all that, you know, stuff. And, and, I, and I told her, I said, if you can't live like that, don't date me. Don't even, you know, do that. So um, she apparently went home basically sick 
uh, you know, her mom said, what happened to you? <laughs> and, uh, but uh, when we, what we now enjoy, um, uh, mom and dad have been there, the Mao family, they, they see us every week, and uh, uh, Becky's now been, been there to see us. Some of you haven't been there yet. But anyway, uh, we, we, we got the blessing. You would, you would be amazed at the life that we live. You would love it. it it's really a, a, just a, a super fun. Uh, I, can, I can say at this moment, at this moment, uh, if you were to ask my kids, they would tell you they live an awesome life. And if you think about it, just in the last, just if, if you don't envy my family, you don't understand what we're doing. You don't understand the life we live. <laughs> Uh, just think about it. Just this morning, we were we were uh, we had one of our little host families, and, and they have a son. And he's it was, today was his first day of school, and I said, "Man, you're so lucky. You get to go to school. We just got to go fly international." And man, he said, "I'd rather fly international." And I was like, "Really? Nah, you go to school. It's a lot more fun." But I mean, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> Him. <laughs> But uh, let me just quickly just tell you just about the last, last uh, few minutes. Now this, let me, let me, before I tell you this, let me just say that, be honest, in all honesty, we have gone through difficult times. But in those difficult times, it was, it's, it's been good. I'm not saying it wasn't good, but I mean the struggles. Where for, for about a couple of years, I just felt like every time we stood up, I got knocked down again. And, uh, but during the time, we were fine. It wasn't like we were, you know, uh, destitute by any means, but just felt like we kept getting hit, hit. And, uh, and, and that's now kind of, kind of passed over. You knew it would. And instead, you know, um, it talks, the Bible talks about that, uh, that, that once that storm goes by, he gives you just that time of, uh, of, of rest. It brings you into the desired haven and that kind of thing. And, uh, and, and just so you know, this is, this is, this is my family. This is a, we, we went through four years where I came home once because my dad was very ill. And, uh, and I was supposed to come home to go with him to a Bible conference. That didn't happen. Instead, we, Dad was in the hospital. Other than that, my, my wife didn't get to come back. Um, and I was in school, and we just went through several years. Well, now, Dad, it's been amazing. Uh, in the last couple of years, we've, we've been able to be back a few times. We have, um, um, in the last year, the last summer we were back here a couple weeks. We didn't get to spend much time. But then since then, Dad, it, it has been incredible what we've done. In 2016... Oh, my, this may be my wife. Uh, let's start with her. Her mother uh, took her on a Caribbean cruise. Ooh. Isn't that not cool? And, uh, and then um, I got to go to the Philippines. Now, I didn't just get to go to the Philippines. I got to go to the Philippines the best possible way you could go to the Philippines. I didn't join some sort of tour group. Instead, I got to be spoiled with a Filipino pastor who, I mean, knows the inside of things. I mean, I got to go swimming uh, right off, there's, there's, on the offshore of this river, there's like this flood control canal. And their youth group and I, we got to go with Josiah swimming. I mean, we got to see, more animals you ever got to see. We got to ride on horses. We got to go see. We, you, know, you know how when you know the area, you know the area, you know where the ins and outs are. And the tourists come by, they're going to see the, the Golden Gate Bridge, you know, they're going to maybe go to Muir Woods, but they don't know where the good spots that's what I got to be. <laughs> it's awesome. We got to, to see, I mean, and we're living like, well, I just, how do you say it? I mean, mangoes every day kind of living. And uh, just an amazing trip. Just before I went, though, um, my, my sister, she decided to stay in China for another year. And so she decided to use her little savings to, to fulfill her dream. Do they know all about this dream, Dad? Do they know, any, do they know this would happen? Did they know that when she went to Europe? Do they know that? Is it okay to say all this stuff? I don't know. She's got it on Facebook, bro. <laughs> this is insane. She just doesn't go to Europe. She's going to go on a cruise. And not only that, she can't do a single, she has to buy a double occupancy. So she paid for it. And then she said, Becky, you want to go? And Becky said, and I said, so wait a minute. How much is it going to cost us? All we had to do was buy her a ticket. And she got to go the entire thing. Now, this is a missionary's wife. I don't even own a house. I don't own a car. I don't have anything. Here's my wife. I'm like, sweetie, what are people going to think? <laughs> <You know? laughs> this is incredible. So, so she does that. And while she's doing, okay, so what are we going to do with, these, with the kids? I'm supposed to go preach this conference. 
Oh, you know, oh, you know, we'll send the kids to America. So my kids get to come to America. So here's my family. I've got my wife gallivanting around on a ship in uh, you can't have a ship in the Mediterranean. I've got my kids living a dream life here, going on adventures all over Northern California with grandma and grandpa. And then there's and there's little me. No, then there's me. I, I um, what I just got to do in a, uh, you would it's such a blessing that, that the Lord just did this, Dad. I was invited to, to come and preach at a, at a conference, this man, a uh, 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 missionary, Brother Balcom, who, who, brother, this is, a, I, I don't know how long I can take, I can take forever just telling God's blessings. I'll just tell you real quickly. This is like a hero man because I've heard about him all my life. I only met him once, but I've heard about him literally. I probably met him when I was really little, but I don't remember it because from the time I was literally a baby, our church supported him in Hong Kong and then eventually moved to Hainan, then eventually moved to another province in Kunming and uh, in, in uh, Yunnan. And uh, so this man, I've known him all my life. The guy's got a ton of kids, and now they're all grown up. He's old, and uh, he's still serving the Lord there. Well, he is very close friends with my first pastor. So when a year, in 2007, the, I heard that Pastor Tomlinson was going to be in China. I, I went all the way into flute to fly to go see him. Well, then this brother Balcom, who's this, this missionary, calls me and says, would you like to come to our, our meeting? And I, I really don't need to go to this meeting. I'm a busy guy. But I want to encourage him. I just thought, you know what? He, he, he was telling me, you know, we don't have any meetings. I thought, you know, Dad, honestly, I was thinking, I really, do I really want to go? <laughs> you know, you know the feeling? <laughs> I, I got to be encouraged. Okay, I said, brother, I'll come. A couple weeks later, he calls and said, would you mind, would you consider speaking? I said, well, if you need to speak. And then uh, come to this, this meeting is going to be Brother Balcom. He's been married for 40 years. Brother Thomas is married for over 40 years. And then Brother Esposito. Now, you guys know Brother Johnny Esposito? I had never met Brother Johnny Esposito except by reputation and a couple of emails. And uh, he's going to be there. Well, he is not exactly young, although because he's younger than the other two men, he con constantly told us how young he was. He's been married for 30-something years. So I'm going to go to this conference, and, uh, and it's in Kunming. Now, let me tell you what Kunming is. Kunming is the, how would you say it, babe? The California of China. Yeah, it's got, it's, the weather is always perfect in Kunming. And, uh, and that's why God called with Balcom there. And uh, I'm wondering about that. And, uh, and so um, he, we, I, I got to go there. And listen, he, I, I paid for my ticket, but then he later on just gave me an envelope. He basically he paid for my ticket. He paid for my hotel. He paid for my meals. And he let me preach there. Guess what topic they gave me to preach on? Home and, the, and, and the family and marriage. Now, these guys have all raised like a ton of kids. <laughs> they've all been married. In total, they've been married over almost 120 years. <laughs> Here's me coming in, you know. Gentlemen, let me tell you about how to be married. Let me tell you about how to have a great marriage. And uh, so, so at that moment, and we... Yes, sir. <laughs> and, and their wives were. And, uh, uh, so anyway... Um, at that moment in my life, I, I, I realized, because we had our two younger ones, um, and we had, a, we, uh, we, had, we had a sister in our church who I, I asked, Would you, you, can you watch for those three days? And, uh, and she, 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 she loved it. So that there was this one moment when my family is scattered over three continents <laughs> in four completely different locations. I'm thinking, man, this is what it's like to be a missionary. <laughs> you know, this is really cool. And uh, so we, but I mean, I, I could go on and on about what life we live. You can ask the Mao family, are we suffering? Thank you, brother. No, we're not. We, uh, we have an awesome uh, life. We got a wonderful home. If you ever want to come have fun, you can come visit us. I promise you, you'll leave saying, man, those guys aren't suffering as much as I thought. So amen. But we don't have as much cheese. And as she noticed today, amen. So, and chocolate is not as available. Amen. No, it's there. Amen. Thank you, Dad. I'll tell you, they have a whole church full of people like the Maos. It's the most amazing group of people. And we still brag about how William has turned these people into singers. Incredible music. Becky, come on up. I was, uh, he stole your thunder a little bit, but I wanted you to come. Because we've heard about this trip. So you, you take it from there. And I'm going to have you stand over here on the side. And It's fun. Um, how it happened with my mom was this past January, it was a year since my dad had passed away. And William had said, uh, um, I think you need to be with mom and we'll figure out a way to get you there. And so that 
developed into mom paying for a ticket, mom saying we need to get away. Because for me, going to San Francisco, well, Palo Alto, where she's at, is getting away, but it's not for her. So she said, let's go do something. And um, so we got to my first ever cruise, just my mom and me. It was really delightful. And um, then with Bethany, it was, um, she said that I was her first choice, but she really didn't think it was possible because we have four kids. And so she had asked Julia, yes, Julia said she couldn't do it. And uh, then I asked my husband and please, and he, okay. He, oh, absolutely. Because when I was with my mom, he had all four guys, uh, kids. And um, then with, with Bethany, he had the two babies. And uh, without a doubt, Dad, without a doubt. Um, so we, we're having fun. We really are. <laughs> it's a blessing. And, and, if, and we can describe to you from our trip there, their day-to-day -day lives are just, um, and because they take advantage of what's around them. Uh, and you've heard about the pollution of Chengdu and so forth, and, and, and you've heard about their health issues and, and all that. But somehow God has a way of compensating to a point where when you look back, you don't think about it all those those problems and the and the, the visa problems and the moving issues and and w <laughs> i know i was thinking just the other day bill about your move from beijing to, to and and what oh man horror stories but uh but but you know all that is kind of in a murky past the golden glow over all of it are the blessings of god and i'm i'm just here to encourage you that uh if if you will stay faithful to christ he'll he will see you through and, uh, and don't get fixated on the immediate problems. You know, keep your eyes on the prize. Keep looking over the horizon at what's coming, which is what I'm trying to encourage you with here tonight. And just keep going for the Lord. Let's pray for a moment. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for how you've encouraged us tonight. And I pray that for our people, they'll realize, Lord, that if they try to, if, if they try to bypass their cross and if they turn their back on you and walk away, Lord, in the long run, they're the losers. And they may feel like they got some immediate gain, but in the long run, they, they've lost so much. And God, for those who will stay faithful, Lord, how you care. I'm glad that my son and daughter-in-law can have testimony, testimonies like this. We didn't, we didn't have them go to China so they could go on cruises, but we're glad that when they obeyed you and went there, Though we miss them terribly here, and, and we realize, Lord, how you, you could use this couple anywhere in America, anywhere in the world. But there's a group of people that needed you. And when my wife and I met them, we, we came away feeling it was worth sacrificing our immediate access to our son and his family, that those brothers and sisters in Christ could have a chance to have the, the type of church that they have now, the kind of pastor and leadership that they have now. We, we, when we met them, we fell in love with them, and we felt it was worth it, giving, giving them up, giving our family up to them. And we're grateful for it. And we're so pleased, Lord, that beyond the immediate blessings you provide that offset the challenges of daily living, there's so much you have prepared for us that will be absent all privations, all pain, all difficulties, all physical limitations, everything provided for. And Lord, if we can just see these next few years through, eternity is already paid for and provided to us. And we just pray that you'll help us to be faithful to that moment. God, we thank you for what you've taught us tonight. Thank you for encouraging us. In Jesus' name, amen. In our hymnals once more, let's stand together. We'll sing one more time. If you can stay and pray, we're still not doing badly for time. It's, uh, it's, it's 825 officially. And uh, so if you can stay and pray, uh, come to me if you need a partner. And uh, we'll give you, give you a partner to pray with. And uh, I think that uh, William and Becky and Becky and Mouse, it'd be probably better for you guys just go ahead under the foyer. So a lot of people are, to, are, to, are going to want to greet you and see you. And some of us that are, that are here will do some prayer and then I'll catch up with you guys for, man, 
real Mexican food. Amen. All right. That was, he craves. Uh, 234. Stay for prayer, please do so, otherwise you are dismissed.